everybody. Welcome to the first video in this series looking at our cargo trailer camper conversion. In this video, we're going to do an overview of the camper itself, uh, a little bit of the th uh, features that we added up front before we did the conversion. Uh, we'll take you for a tour around the exterior and then we'll head on to the interior to look at some of the amenities that we packed into this trailer. Okay, so off the bat, this is a 2020 Continental Cargo V Series 6x12 cargo trailer. Uh, the reason we decided to go with this manufacturer was the ease of making alterations and, and add-ons to the camper directly from the manufacturer. Their parent company is Forest River Camper, so you can add pretty much anything that you want to these campers. Um, first thing that we did add was a tandem axle. Um, we didn't really know how much weight we would be carrying going into the conversion because there's a lot of amenities that we wanted to pack into this little 6x12 trailer. With that being said, a single axle just would not have withstanded the weight um, after the full conversion was completed. The other piece which was crucial is having a straight axle versus a standard drop axle. Um, we needed a little bit more ground clearance beneath the camper. I knew that I may have had some plumbing under there um, or some, some wiring and most certainly a gray water tank for our water system. So having that little bit of extra ground clearance was really helpful in the end. The only thing I will say is it does raise the tongue and your hitch a little bit higher, so you might have to adjust your hitch um, that you're towing with to, to avoid the trailer squatting down at an angle. So coming around to the rear, um, we do have your standard gate back cargo um, <clears throat> ramp here. And you'll see I do have two telescoping struts here. Now the importance of that is we wanted to have a, a little deck patio. Uh, so when this gate is down, which I'll show you in a little bit, those, those telescoping struts come out uh, to adjust to the ground level and it gives you a lot of extra space uh, for the kids to play, dogs to lounge, and I'll show you a little bit of what that looks like here in a minute. The other side of our trailer, um, we do have our 30 amp shore power hookup here. I did have this installed by the manufacturer, um, so one of the other features that I did choose is a 30 amp sub panel install. It comes with a little bit of a, a, a light kit. Uh, I did end up taking all of that out. So when you're deciding on whether or not to have the manufacturer install an electrical system for you, um, if, you're, if you're savvy with electric work, I would probably skip that and just install these on your own. The other thing that is here on this side is our gray water tank under there. Um, I've got a 25 gallon gray water tank below there. This does have a adapter that will hook up to your standard uh, sewer if you're at a campground that has um, sewer amenities as well as the importance of having shore power if you are not off-grid. Coming around to the front here is where a lot of the business is. So uh, we kind of packed a lot onto the tongue which again um, this does add a, a lot of weight to the tongue however that's where you want to have most of the weight when you're thinking about where to put the heaviest items in your conversion. So uh, left to right here, we have a 200 amp 12 volt solar battery for our solar system. We'll get into that in another video. I've got this camper rigged with a 400 watt 12 volt solar system. The air, I'm sorry, the um, heat pump condenser here for our mini split and this is a 9000 BTU mini split that does AC and heat uh, and then above that I've got my Camp Lux um, Pro Series on-demand propane hot water heater. So this Camp Lux uh, water heater does come on or off for the winter. Um, you can see down here is where I have all my water hookups so I've got from right to left I have uh, cold water in and the middle is cold water out, which will feed this propane hot water heater. Um, and from the propane hot water heater, hot will come into that very left spigot there. Um, so it's pretty easy to hook up once you are attached to your water source. This can be hooked up either to a campsite water source, or I do have a 20 gallon 
water reservoir that I will put in the back of my truck um, and I can hook that up for a gravity feed. I do have a 12 volt DC water pump in there as well that does three gallons per minute. So uh, regardless of if it's gravity feed or not, we do have that extra boost inside of the camper. Okay, coming back around front, um, some of the last features that we did add from the manufacturer were our windows here. Um, we decided to center them over the axle. You can place the windows anywhere along the exterior wall that you would like. I didn't want to go into installing windows on my own. I know that there's a little bit of um, structure behind there that you really want to make sure that you maintain the integrity of. So it was just easier to have the windows done by the manufacturer. The other piece that you can't see right here, but we'll discuss when we go on inside is the roof vent. Um, I do have a roof vent in there. I wasn't sure if I was going to go with a roof mounted AC unit versus the split unit that I did end up putting on the tongue. Um, regardless, I do have a roof vent in there with a DC fan, which is um, crucial for when we're cooking inside in the colder months. Um, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. I do have these camper stairs on here. This was not an option that was available to us from the manufacturer. I did purchase these um, aftermarket and added those on myself. Um, <clears throat> but with the extra ground clearance that we got with the straight axle, uh, they fit perfectly and they work great. So. As for the exterior, that pretty much sums it up. Um, this camper is three years old now. It's seen about 10,000 miles. Um, it's been coast to coast. I've not had any issues from the exterior or the interior. Um, so overall, it's holding up really well. And let's take you guys inside and, and check out all the features that we packed into this. Okay, so... Before we go in, um, we packed a lot into this 6x12 trailer. We knew we were going to be traveling with two children, two dogs, spending a lot of time in here. So it was important to make sure that we had all the amenities we needed for our long road trips, um, yet saving as much space as possible. So as we come in through here, um, first item on the right here is our closed closet. We store all of our clothes in here, as well as some first aid and some toiletries. Below that, I have my solar cabinet, so this is where I keep my charge controller. Um, my AC inverter, I've got a 3000 watt inverter in there, as well as my sub panel sitting there in the back. Uh, it's a little bit smaller of a space than I would have liked for this size inverter, but I did end up upgrading this inverter uh, from a 2000 watt, so it was just a little bit bigger. I do have a vent on there, so it stays nice and cool. So far, we have had no issues with that. Coming in, we're looking at our galley here. Uh, so I built all these cabinets uh, to fit this space, and I really wanted to incorporate the refrigerator into that. Um, we also have our custom butcher block counter on top of here. Below in these cabinets, we have all of our cooking utensils, our dishware, um, our garbage, etc. So we'll show you that guys that in another video. Um, for the wood, I used Baltic birch. And yes, it's a little bit heavier, um, but knowing that I wanted a sturdy build, you know, I, I don't want my cabinets going cockeyed. I don't want them falling apart. So that was um, why I decided to use Baltic Birch. It's pretty sturdy, um, but it is a little bit heavier than I would have liked. However, it seems to be working out just fine. Um, so we've got a sink here, hot, cold water, obviously. Um, propane gas stove. Above that is our food storage and our spice rack. I've installed this little light here above the sink when we're doing dishes later at night. To the right, um, we have our bathroom shower combo. Uh, this is a just a um, cassette toilet, so I don't have black water in here. Um, it does require to be emptied after it fills up, but it's really not much of a hassle, so we don't mind that at all. It's a great install for as much as we use it. And looking into the depths here, um, on the bottom here, I've got a futon. So I built this to 
function as a couch seating while we are in the trailer. This does fold flat for the kids to sleep on, and then it does fold the opposite direction when we have the gate down in our patio setup. I'll show you guys that in a minute. Um, this bench here has a little seating bench. It's got some storage underneath. This does actually fold out um, and goes flat across the floor here. It's just a little extra lounging area, sleeping area, dog bed, however you want to use it. It comes in handy when it's raining and we want to stretch our legs out a little bit while the kids are occupying the couch. So, But like I said, there is storage under here as well. I put this little doggy gate in um, when we're outside of the camper. I pull this futon flat. Makes a nice little space for our dogs under here when we're not in the camper. They love it because it's secluded and they can get away from the kids. So, looking at the adult sleeping space, um, I have this bed platform on gas struts. And as you can see, this frame that I built into the camper here, the bed will rest on that. I show you that in a minute. Um, but when we are not using it, the gas struts help us get it up into the ceiling and, and hold it there. So it's worked out wonderfully. Um, in our sleeping arrangements, the adults are up in the top loft, the kids are in the bottom loft, and I'll show you that configuration here in a minute. Um, and for such a small camper, we're able to, to sleep four really. So looking at the roof vent that I was talking about, um, this is a Max Air roof vent. This runs on DC. Um, so even if I'm off grid, you know, the solar is just powering this from our uh, 12 volt system and I always have it running when I'm cooking. Um, another really important safety feature if you guys are building these, make sure you've got a carbon monoxide detector. Um, this vent does a really fantastic job of ventilating and keeping it a little bit cooler in here. Now this is our air handler. Uh, you guys saw the heat pump slash condenser on the tongue. This is the air handler for the 9000 BTU uh, air conditioner slash heater. Um, this thing is awesome. I would highly recommend this to anybody, even if you have a traditional camper uh, installing one of these. They are fantastic. So it keeps us nice and cool in the hot months and it keeps us nice and warm in the colder months. Um, we will go ahead and move to our futon and bed configuration so I can show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so here is the futon flat. Um, creates a nice sleeping area. I did have to cut down a mattress a little bit to fit these just because it's kind of a custom space. And like I said, that doggy gate comes in really handy, creates a nice little space under here for them. When we're not here, we just slide that guy across and um, they've got their own space down there. Okay, here is that up position of the futon. Uh, could give us a little bit more space when we've got the gate down The kids are playing outside. We're cooking in here. We've got a little bit more space here behind um, behind our galley and our, our little bench seat here. And here we have our sleeping arrangement when a top bunk is down. Um, pretty spacious up here for mom and dad. Crawl under here for the kids. And the dogs are down bottom, so it works awesome. And finally, I'm going to show you guys what it all looks like when we lower our gate. Okay, you can see we've got a great patio space here. Here's our futon in that outside facing position. Uh, we do have a little storage area under our bench here, the little Bob Ross action paintings on here. Uh, it was just something a little fun to do, but we really enjoy this outdoor space. Um, good opportunity to hang out, watch the kids, let the dogs lounge, and enjoy our time camping. So that about wraps up the interior. Um, thanks for watching this video, guys. In the videos to come, I will go through in a little bit more detail of how I constructed this camper, how I insulated it, um, did all the finishing work, built all this custom sleeping arrangements and cabinetry.
plumbing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We'll get into that in the next video. So, thanks for joining. Don't forget to like us and share, please. Thank you.